A comet moves through the night sky, perhaps putting on one of the best shows we've had in the past couple years. Let's take a look at what you can go out to observe in the night sky for October of 2024. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Let's do one more quick check-in as we begin the month of October with our friend T. Corona Borealis, which has been on its own time frame in terms of when it wants to go nova. Estimates for this appear to have been a little bit off, and this will be the last time that we cover it in our monthly series. But I do have a video ready to go the second it goes nova, as long as we can still see it and it's not too close to the sun from our perspective. So be sure to subscribe to this channel if you have an interest in that, because if it's still visible, I'll be sure to post that video whenever it happens. Let's turn our attention from T. Corona Borealis to the Orionids meteor shower. This meteor shower emanates from the remnants of Halley's Comet, which travels through our inner solar system about every 76 years. When it does that, it leaves a trail of debris that the Earth travels through about once every year, creating this meteor shower for us to look up and see. To see the Orionids, Go outside around 1 a.m. on the morning of October 20th and look towards the east. There you will see the constellation Orion slowly rising above the horizon. It's from this region of space that the meteors will appear from. Sadly, the moon will really wash out all but the brightest meteors this year, really kind of ruining the show, but you might still be able to see 5 to 10 meteors per hour if you're willing to go out and try. Even though it can feel like the moon gets in the way sometimes, particularly with meteor showers, it's still an incredible object to get out to observe and image. Let's begin this month by taking a look at its phases, beginning with a new moon on October 2nd. First quarter moon October 10th, full moon October 17th, and a last quarter moon October 24th. The moon also makes a close pass to several objects this month, including Venus on October 5th, Saturn October 14th, M45 October 19th, Jupiter October 21st, and Mars on October 24th. If you live or are planning to visit Chile or Argentina, be sure to take a pair of solar glasses with you because you might be able to see an annular eclipse which will be occurring on October 2nd. During this event, the moon never fully covers the sun so you must wear certified protective solar glasses throughout the entirety of this event. After Saturn's closest approach to Earth this September, it still remains the most dominant planet in the night sky and an incredible object to go out to observe or image. Saturn rises high in the southeast and is visible right after sunset. Not far behind it is the largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter, rising to a good altitude in the east for view starting around midnight. For those of you who enjoy staying up late or getting up early, you'll see Mars rising in the east to view starting around 2.30 a.m. In fact, if you're up observing Mars at 2.30 a.m., you may be able to spot five planets at the same time with Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, Jupiter, and Mars spanning from west to east. Let's not leave out Venus and Mercury. Venus is an incredibly bright object moving through the southwest sky right after sunset, but sadly, there's really no opportunity to view Mercury this month, as it is too low to the horizon in most cases and will be unobservable due to how close it is to the Sun. The main event this October that everyone's so excited about is Comet Shushin Shan Atlas, and I do apologize if I've mispronounced that. This comet has been on people's radar for a few months now, and it's finally at a point where it's going to be rising into the early evening sky in the west, putting on perhaps one of the best shows that we've seen from a comet in the past few years. I'm going to start doing my observations of this comet around October 12th, when it'll be near its closest point to Earth. To see it, go outside about 45 minutes after sunset and look towards the west. There, low to the horizon, you may see a small, faint, blurry object in the constellation Virgo. If you have trouble finding it due to the sky glow left over from the setting sun, switch to binoculars to see if you can pinpoint it in this region of the sky. Even though this comet will be less bright each night after the 12th, it will probably be easier to spot as it moves higher in the sky as it enters the constellation Serpens around October 16th. 
It's around this point that I'll start making my observations a little bit later into the evening to allow the sky more time to darken. This will help it to really pop out of the background of space. As October goes on, the comet will probably start to go out of reach for the naked eye, but will still be a nice binocular and telescope target as it goes through the constellation Ophiuchus. And please let us know if you're going out to see this comet, which may end up being one of the best we've had in the past few years. After you've enjoyed the comet this month, turn your attention to some deep sky objects about an hour and a half after sunset. It's important to know that getting away from light pollution, and that does include the moon, is gonna maximize your experience, whether you're looking at these objects with the naked eye, a pair of binoculars, or a telescope. Let's begin our journey into deep space this month by going outside around 8.30 or 9 p.m. and looking towards the northeast. There you will come across the Triangulum Galaxy M33. This object can actually be viewed from very dark locations with just the naked eye, but is also a very susceptible target to light pollution. See if you can make out the spiral arms of this galaxy through your telescope if the sky is dark enough. Next, move over to the Little Dumbbell Nebula. This planetary nebula is quite faint and will definitely take a larger telescope to make out much of its detail, but it's a fun object to observe visually. Now let's move on really to three objects in one by studying the Great Andromeda Galaxy. I was actually able to make out this object with the naked eye a few years ago when I was visiting a dark sky location and it's the farthest thing I've ever been able to see in the night sky with just the naked eye. To find Andromeda, make your way over to the constellation Andromeda until you find a blurry oval-shaped smudge that is a galaxy on a collision course with our own. Now, when you're viewing Andromeda through a telescope, you'll have a hard time seeing the intricate detail that showed up in this long exposure image I took, but you will be able to make out a lot of its core and companion galaxies M31 and M110. Those are just some of the most incredible things that you can get out to see in the night sky for the month of October. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what you're hoping to get out to see in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.